Hi, Tom here from King's Auto Repair, and today we're going to walk you through what we do when we look over a car for state inspection. So one of the biggest questions we get asked for state inspection, what do we need to be able to do a Pennsylvania state inspection on your car? Well, we need two things. We need, well, three things. We need the car, we need your owner's card, and your insurance card. Those are the three things we need. We do not need your driver's license because a lot of people always ask, hey, do you need my driver's license for this? We don't. So let's go and let's walk through how we do a state inspection. All right. So the very first thing we do when we state inspect the car is we take it for a test drive here. So let's go on our test drive route. We'll probably speed this up because traffic's starting to get a little bit heavy. But uh, yeah, we start off with a, with a drive. So let's go. So the reason that we test drive cars is we want to start out and see if they steer okay, if they pull one direction really hard, either to the left or to the right when we start driving it, or it has some type of other problem braking or steering going down the road. Right now, going down the road, this car drives really nice. It doesn't pull to the left or to the right, which would cause it to fail inspection. And when we go to check the brakes, we're also, when we step on them real hard, we're going to see if it pulls either to the left or to the right, signifying that there's a problem. Now, the reason we want to do that is we want to see if there's any type of issue with it because the Pennsylvania State Inspection Manual says if it pulls to the left or to the right when braking, it is uh, actually a failure. So... When we test drive them too, we're also listening for wheel bearings or any kind of other issues that might be present when we work on the car. Because if we notice something like that, we want to be able to bring it to your attention. Not that, you know, two weeks from now, all of a sudden you start hearing the wheel bearing that that's bad. So we always try to take it for a test drive before we do it. One, because the state says we should. Secondly, we want to make sure that when we look your car over, if it needs something odd that we wouldn't notice if we just pulled it straight into the shop, we're able to bring that to your attention. So that's the reason that for the test drive. Um, when we get back to the shop, we'll dig into the nuts and bolts of exactly what we need to do to perform the Pennsylvania State Inspection. We always test the parking brake too, because that's also a state requirement. So we stop on the hill as we come in the shop here and we'll pull up in the parking brake or actually at the parking brake and we leave off the brake just to check and make sure it works. And then we'll also check and make sure that it releases when we're done. See, we roll backwards a little bit. Now we know the parking brake works properly. So now we're gonna head into the shop and we're gonna do the in-shop stuff All right, so now we go through and do a light check in the car as soon as it comes in. So we're gonna check and make sure all the lights in the back here work. First, we're gonna start off with brakes, brake lights and reverse lights. So I've got my helper Ethan in there. You see he just put the brake lights on, so we're gonna check those there, there, and up there. And we got the reverse lights here and here, and they're all good. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna have the check the parking lights so you see the parking lights are working here and they're working here. And you'll also see we have the license plate lights working. You'll see a little bit of reflection down here and on my hand, you can may probably see it. But then we'll check the turn signals. You'll see we have a left-hand turn signal and we have a right-hand turn signal. And then we will check four-way, the four-way flashers. And then we'll go around to the front of the car and check those. All right, so now we come around to the front of the car and we're gonna check all the lights up front. So as we walk around, he'll have the fog lights on and the headlights. We can see our fog lights are working, headlights working, and now he's gonna hit the high beams. Oh, you'll see you hit the high beams right here and you'll see the left turn signals flash in here and we'll go to the other side and he'll do the same thing over here. We got the turn signal and then he'll turn the high beams on again 
and we'll be able to check them. We see that the fog light goes off when the high beams come on. That means everything is working properly. So this car, all the lights are good. All right, so off camera, we did a little bit of magic. We got this set up on the lift and we got the hood open. Now we're actually gonna check the wiper blades because when we were out on the test drive, you saw the windshield didn't clean very well. So we're gonna check to see if the wiper blades are actually dirty or they need to be replaced. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull them up like this. And as we pull them up, we're gonna take our hand and we're gonna start out at the edge and oh, this one's this one's torn. So this actually here, this would be an item that fails Pennsylvania state inspection. So a torn wiper blade or a wiper blade that doesn't clear well actually fails. So we're gonna have to talk to them about putting a new set of wiper blades on this car. So now we got those checked. What we're gonna do is do a quick check under the hood, make sure all our caps are there. There's nothing under here that looks like it's rotten or falling apart. So as we do our check under the hood, we're just gonna make sure everything's kind of in place. Um, there isn't a whole lot to check for state inspection under the hood. They don't have you check any fluids. All that needs to happen is you just need to make sure everything looks whole. There's no giant leaks anywhere. Um, if you have a really large leak, like a fuel leak or a very large oil leak, um, you can get a failure for state inspection for that. And that's just because it's a fire hazard and they don't want a car that's a fire hazard going down the road. So we're gonna call this good under here. Um, we don't see any major issues. So I'm gonna close the hood and we're gonna move on to checking the suspension. All right, so we got the car up to level here that for a tall guy like me, I can work on it pretty easily. So what we're gonna do, the very first thing is we're gonna grab a hold of our wheel and we're gonna move it side to side and we're gonna feel for any type of play in it. When we do this, we're feeling for some type of knocking in it. And you, if there's loose tie rods, you'll be able to feel it by doing that. And then we're gonna grab it at the top and the bottom. And that's gonna give us like a wheel bearing and a wheel bearing and ball joint check because what we're doing is trying to move that ball joint in or out or side to side, see if there's any play with it. As we do that, this one feels very solid. And then we're gonna go around and we're gonna do that to the rest of the wheels on this car because this has independent rear suspension. If it were a live axle vehicle, we wouldn't be shaking the rear. Um, that means it's all one piece, that axle. This one has multiple joints in the back. So we're gonna shake all those and make sure everything's tight. All right, so we got around to this wheel. This wheel actually has some loose suspension on it. Uh, we did go digging because we want to find out what it is before we put it on video here. But when we grab a hold of this wheel and we move it like this, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's tight this way. But when we grab it on the top and bottom and we move it, it makes a slight knocking noise and I can feel movement. So I'm gonna, we're gonna put this up in the air and we're gonna show you what's actually loose on this. All right, so our knocking noise is coming from this upper control arm here. You can see it ever so slightly on the video. It is up and try to point at it here. It is that arm right up there, that kind of rusty looking bushing. Um, you'll see, we'll zoom out, I'll get my hand out of the way. Um, it's moving just a little bit. This is not enough to fail inspection. Um, it's, it's just not enough movement, but it's something that we would definitely bring to the customer's attention because if left go, it's going to wear the tires out and cause other issues. So we're definitely going to bring it to their attention that, hey, this joint is going bad and should be replaced here in the future. So now that we got all the suspension checked, we're going to pull the wheels off and do an actual brake check on it. During the test drive, everything felt really good. So we're not expecting to find any type of brake issues going on. So I'm gonna get all four wheels off and we'll come back and we'll show how we check the brakes.
All right, so we got all the wheels off here because we don't want you to watch boring stuff. And uh, we got our brake gauge and a flashlight. So our brake gauge here, we got a bunch of different numbers on it. It's all in millimeters, but state of Pennsylvania says you have to make the measurements in 30 seconds of an inch. So everyone has a conversion number on it because buying a brake gauge that's in 30 seconds of an inch is nearly impossible to find right now. So we have these and they're all labeled up with what they are in 30 seconds of an inch. So we're gonna go into here and we're gonna check what our brake pads are on the inside and outside. For the letter of the law, what we need to do is we need to be able to check one side on the rear and one side on the front, and they can't be on the same side. That is what the, the law states. Here at King's, we check all, all four wheels every time because we're more concerned, hey, if there's a problem, we don't want to send you down the road with a problem. And if you go to a shop that checks just one back and one front on opposing sides and you have a problem with the other side, they are actually legally responsible for the side that they didn't check. So even though they didn't take a look at them, they're still responsible for making sure they're in good condition. That's why we pull, go and pull all four wheels. So let's come in here and we'll show you how we actually measure it. That way, if you wanna do this at home, you can buy one of these gauges on the internet and do it yourself. Um, so I'm thinking this thing's about a 6.30 second. So what we'll do is we'll grab our six here or our, see what it is in millimeters, five millimeters, five millimeters, 6.30 seconds. And we're gonna take it and we're gonna stick it in here against the rotor and against the brake pad. And we're gonna see if it has any kind of room. So, and we'll clean the dirt out of it because sometimes you get dirt in there. And what we're doing is we're checking the pad thickness between this backing plate and this rotor right here. So I can fit a six in here and I feel some movement. So we're gonna check with an eight next. We're gonna take this eight, we're gonna slide it in here. And the eight, the eight's pretty tight. So we're gonna actually go with that. This one measures about seven thirty seconds. So we're gonna err on the side of caution, go a little bit lower. So we're between, we're between six and eight. So we're going to go with that. This measures 730 seconds. And then we're going to check the inside pad too. So that one's a little difficult, but I'm going to go around and do the exact same thing in through the side of the brake here that you just witnessed here. And we're going to go around and do that at all four corners. So that's how we end up measuring the brakes on the car. Um, I won't bore you with doing the rest of them, but we're basically going to do the exact same procedure. Now, when we are looking at them, what we're going to also do, since you were in here looking at the edge, is we're also going to look, we're going to poke our head down in here, and we're actually going to look to see if there's any separation happening on that actual brake pad that we were just measuring. And what we'll see after we clean the dirt out of there, if they are separating, you'll start to see a gap between the actual brake pad in there and this metal backing plate. So we'll also be inspecting for that as we go around and taking a look. And that usually happens at the top edges here or the bottom edge. And that's where salt and water gets in and it kind of just ruins the brake pad prematurely. Uh, that happens here quite a bit in Pennsylvania. Um, it's not uncommon to have those brake pads separate like that. Uh, the last thing we're gonna do is check the tire depth on it. And I didn't grab my tire depth checker, so I'm gonna go grab that real quick. But all these tires look in good condition. I was looking at them as I walked around and I shook the tires. So there's plenty of tread depth on these tires. But what we'll be looking for, and I'll grab um, a little piece to kind of show you what's going on. Uh, we'll measure these. And then what we'll do is I'll show you what an actual failing one looks like. All right. I went and grabbed my well-worn tire checker right here been dropped a couple of times, the glass is broken. And I also got this handy dandy tire uh, piece to kind of show you what a worn out tire looks like. So what we'll end up doing is we'll take our tire depth checker and we'll reset it by pushing it to pushing this down. And what we'll do is we'll just come up and we look for basically a spot on the tire, which is the absolute lowest. And we're gonna take pressure, we'll put that on there and we'll push it down. And then we push that there and you'll see 
This measures about eight and a half, 30, little eight and three quarters, like kind of 30 seconds. So I don't know, uh, I can't do the math that quick, but it's something in one twenty eighths. So if someone wants to get that exact, if we were doing this on a car that came in today, we would actually call that eight thirty seconds because we always air to the bottom. Um, as we go through, we'll check the rest of them. You see it measures nine, closer to nine here in the middle. <clears throat> and you see we're actually over near the edge here. You see we're actually much closer to eight. So that would be, a, we would take out of those three measurements, we'll take the lowest one here, which is eight, and we'll call that tire eight thirty seconds of an inch. Now, to see a tire that's actually worn out, that would need to be replaced, we have this little handy tool. So I uh, got the green, yellow, red, kind of tells you the different tire depth checking here, but you'll see as we check this depth here, you'll see this one reads quite good at 10. This one is five, so about half worn. This one here, they say measures 330 seconds. It actually measures two. And the reason I could tell you that it measured 230 seconds is all tires have these little, what they call wear bars in them. And when they get down to the wear bars, it means it should be replaced. A tire like this does not channel water very well, and that's why anything less than this, the state says it fails Pennsylvania state inspection. So this is what a tire looks like when it actually fails or worse than this, where there's less tread. So this one right here, still plenty of tread yet. Uh, when we get down to like 430 seconds and below, hydroplaning really starts to become a much bigger issue. So. Um, being that you can't get any water to channel out of a tire that's worn like this. That's why the state says it fails. So all in all, when we go back and look at this car today, we're going to, we're going to put it up and we're going to check underneath yet. And that'll be our last check. We're going to check and make sure nothing's fallen off. Nothing's rusted. There's no holes anywhere, but all in all today, so far for inspection, this car would need a pair of wiper blades. Uh, we're going to actually talk to the customer, which uh, actually is us. This is one of our loaner cars about putting the tie rod in here or the upper control arm in here that actually has wear. And that might be the actual reason that there's more wear on the inside of this tire than there is on the outside. There's that worn bushing right there. So um, we're going to put this up in the air. We're going to do a check underneath. And if everything looks good, uh, we'll put it back together, and like I said, this car today would need a set of wiper blades for inspection. So let's put it up, take a look. All right, so we got the car up in the air the rest of the way. We're going to walk under it, just make sure nothing else has fallen off of it, and there's no other issues. So we got a really super bright light here, and we're just going to walk underneath and check and make sure it doesn't have any kind of crazy fuel leaks. There's no rust holes anywhere. Uh, I hope there's no rust holes. This is one of our newer cars to the fleet. So everything's looking pretty good. These BMWs, you want to check where the subframe mounts in the back here. They get a little rusty back here, sometimes rot out, and that's usually the death of these cars. Um, we got a fuel line here that looks good. The exhaust looks good. Um, looks like we have an oil leak. So we got oil leaking back here. But other than that, I'm going to say it looks pretty good. It drove really good. Um, I think we're just dealing Got lots of shields here, kind of hard to see everything, but um, overall, the car looks good. We got some oil leaks here, so we'll have to address those. Um, they're not bad enough to fail inspection. Uh, an oil leak that would fail inspection would be pouring oil all over the exhaust and causing the fire hazard. This right here uh, is not dripping on the exhaust, thus it's not a fire hazard, and it does not need to be repaired for inspection. Um, overall, car looks pretty good. I, uh, haven't been under this loaner car in a while, so, um, it's kind of a new look for me. And, uh, so yeah, 
Um, I got one last thing I want to show you, and this is a little bit that makes uh, makes working on the cars here in Pennsylvania a little bit better. I stopped Ethan because this one's really crusty up here. We always clean the hubs before we put the cars back together. So I'm going to grab, we always take a little wire brush and what we'll do is we'll clean the face. And then we'll clean the inside of the tire and the rim. And then with those two clean, we're going to grab a little bit of this Permatex high temperature grease. And we take this and we put it on the hub where the rust was at and this allows the hub to seat onto the wheel without anything getting stuck between it um, because if you don't clean the rust off and it builds up enough it will actually keep the wheel from torquing correctly onto the onto the hub here and when that happens you won't notice it for about four or five thousand miles that the hub is coming loose so right, the wheel is actually coming loose from the car it doesn't happen right away it happens over time so always clean the hubs if they're a little rusty clean the inside of the rim and get that new ceiling that new surface on there coat it with some grease put the wheel back on and it'll all be good so uh, if you want there will be an inspection checklist down in the notes you can grab that inspection checklist and go down and kind of see, check and see if your car needs anything for inspection and kind of go through it before you take it in for inspection. Um, I said, it's this car right here for inspection. It really needs one wiper blade. We're gonna suggest doing two. We're gonna bring up that suspension piece to them also. So anyway, have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.